Welcome to the Raise Your Energy podcast. My name is Linda and I am your host. I had the honor to interview Jessica Corbin and it was a magical exchange about energy, the power of our heart and how we can tackle burnout on an individual and organizational level. As the founder and CEO of Source, Jessica is dedicated to regenerating human energy, accelerating organizational consciousness and architecting a vital and sustainable future. Recently named by the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center as one of their 2020 milestone makers and brought into Startup Health's portfolio of companies, Source is solving the 300 billion problem of stress and burnout through data-driven and human-centered technologies. You really do not want to miss this episode. Well, hello everybody, and I am so honored to have Jess here from Source. Oh my God, I'm so happy that you're here. It's fantastic. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been very, very um, grateful for you coming into our world. There are, you know, there's few people in the world that call themselves an energy coach. You are one of them, and that is right up our alley at Source. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love it. Okay, so my first question is, can you tell the listeners and even me a little bit more about you, your story, and how you actually got the idea to found Source or create the app? How did it come to that? Yeah, it was all very, very, very unplanned and uncalculated. And um, it, it all starts with my athletic career. So I was in high school, like a high performing, you know, athlete. I um, was an All-American, so top 25 in the nation for cross country. And this is a long race, you know, it was a 3.1 mile race. And I, you know, got in the sport again, kind of accidentally. My good friend was in it and I wanted to be, you know, connected to her. And so I jumped in and I ended up being, you know, a pretty good runner. And um, it really kind of sparked my passion around human performance. It sparked my passion around unlocking potential. Um, I am a very competitive person by nature mm. and I have a lot of fire, you know, inside my heart. And, um, and so I just kind of got bit by the bug. I wanted to see how, how great I could be. And mm. I ended up having a lot of success. Um, Wow. I was also recruited by Division One schools and, you know, went to UCLA. But early on in my collegiate career, I came up against a lot of injury. My body was starting to give me wow. feedback wow. that, you know, um, it was all a bit too much. But I didn't have any tools at that time. The only tool that I had was my will, right, mm -hmm. to dig deep, push through, yeah. you know, push, mind push, push. over matter. <laughs> like, I was just willing to just basically destroy my body in pursuit of winning. And that ended up having some really significant ramifications. Um, and by the age of 30, I had extreme adrenal fatigue because I kind of took all that fire, that drive, that passion. I put it into my career early mm -hmm. on, which was in live television. I was a TV host, producer, executive producer. Um, and then I had a big family crisis and all of that stress. So like my, my predisposition for burnout, mm. my fiery constitution, my will, <laughs> on top of all these adrenaline inducing yeah. activities. At 30, I had extreme adrenal fatigue and burnout. And the only place I could go to get relief was my acupuncturist. And oh. he would assess my pulse. And he would tell me all these incredible things about my system. He would say, your chi is really wiry today. You need to do mm. yin yoga. Your chi is really strong today. You can run hard. And that literally on the bed of my acupuncturist, not a personal bed, in the bed that they treat you on, the treatment bed, yeah. um, that light bulb came on. And I was like, wait a second. What are you assessing in my pulse that's giving you all this information? And how can I do this for myself? every single day. And yeah. that's how Source was born, where I was able to actually 
instead of seeing my body like an adversary, like something I had to manipulate and had to um, mm. like wrestle with, all of a sudden my body became my biggest ally. And I started to actually listen and honor my body because all along it was whispering to me exactly what I needed to do, but I didn't have the right translation mm. tool to interpret those body whispers. And so source is literally like a body whisperer. It's it's interpreting this subtle but powerful frequency that we are all emitting. And it basically shows you, distills down kind of where you sit on the spectrum of stress, um, looking at your multidimensionality, mm. your physical, your mental, your emotional, your relational. And it says, listen, Jess, this is how much gas you have in the tank today. And this is what you need to do in light of that. And from the Eastern standpoint, it required the human end, but from the Western standpoint, there was this biomarker equivalent. We put it now into an app and your smartphones so that you all do not have to experience burnout. That is just amazing, amazing story. Fantastic yeah. idea. I mean, <laughs> I heard you before talk about that um, what we measure in the source app, so HRV, is actually around for a long time and actually known as well, yes. right? So can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about HRV and what it actually is? Yeah, I mean, imagine my surprise, right? Like, I'm again, doing this, what felt like a very mystical thing, this acupuncture thing. I was yeah, getting relief, yeah. but I didn't understand. And there was a mathematical equivalent. And it had over 60 years of science behind it. You know, HRV has been in cardiac medicine for a long time. And it's known in cardiac medicine as the gold standard for well-being. It has been used for you know, many, many, many decades now, you know, to predict mortality. So HRV, heart rate variability, it's not just your heart rate. It's actually looking at your autonomic nervous system. It's looking at basically how, um, based on these little variables in between mm -hmm. the peaks of your EKG reading, mm -hmm. it is telling you how much challenge and demand your body can handle today. That's what it's, That's what it's telling you. And so that, you know, again, blew my mind. Um, and high sports performance athletes have been using it to determine training protocols like for oh. a while because of all this early research. But it was cost prohibitive, you know, for the average consumer. I mean, these systems used to cost, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so yeah. with the mobile health tech boom and the advancement of technology, it's not like this is new. It was just cost prohibitive, you know, relegated to settings yeah. like hospitals and like high performance athletes that could spend a disproportionate amount of money on this assessment. But now everybody yeah. can have it, you know, at a cost that is very, very affordable. It's crazy, the advancement. And it's crazy that it has been used for such a long time, but that we're just getting to it now. I mean, it's fantastic. It's great. And I, I would love to understand, or better for my audience to understand, what can they get out of it? So in one of your videos that I actually watched, you talked about overstressing the system and understressing the system so can right. you explain that a little bit more of and how that works in the source app how can the data that the app is giving us help us to lead a, a better life absolutely so upon being in the pit of burnout i had to figure out why this was happening to me <laughs> because i was so willing i was so willing to do whatever it took you know, to heal. Yeah. The yeah. part that I didn't understand is that, you know, stress in and of itself is actually not bad. Okay. Uh -huh. It's really yeah. not bad. If we look at the science of stress, it's not a bad thing. You need stress in order to get stronger, get faster at anything that you're trying to achieve. So too little stress leaves you in a very suboptimal state <laughs> and a place where I rarely lived you know, yeah. because again, I was so <laughs> achievement oriented. I rarely lived in that part. But 
your body works like this bell curve, right? So too little stress, not good. If you start to effort a little bit more, then you start to, I would say, um, create more progress for yourself and any goal that you're trying to achieve. A little bit more effort, then we start to really get into the sweet spot, that optimal stress level, where we want people living every single day and it's possible. So possible, so easy, right? We just need to educate people about how to do this. Yeah. But all too often, because the old map and the old psychology is dig deep, push through. Everybody thinks that it's like this never ending up to the right sort of trajectory, but that whole equation falls apart at a certain point. Meaning all of you have experienced that more effort at a certain point isn't yielding more returns. You're trying harder, but not getting further down the line. And this is physiological. Right. So this is affecting me physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally. So you start to go over the falls and you hit this zone mm. of plateauing. So if you have any you know, experience, let's say, doing a marathon or, you know, any athletic endeavor, they talk a lot about plateaus, but plateaus exist in anything. Right. Right. More effort, not yielding more return. And the real tricky spot is that some people take that plateau and they say, I'll show you. And they they, they effort more. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes. (laughs) They start to overreach even more. And that's where burnout is in this like at the bottom of the hill, the bottom of the bell curve on the other end of the spectrum, the the science now Mm -hmm. and the art is how do we get your system into that sweet spot every single day? Taking your heart rate variability will help you do this easily. And then in source, of course, we provide not just the data, but also the coaching Mm. because you need to know what to do. Again, what we are up against more than anything is, um, I would say in the friendliest way, innocence, like people just don't know you know, yes. you could also say yeah, ignorance. people just don't yeah. know. But once you know, then like I had somebody come up to me yesterday. We put on this this workshop where we're talking about the science of stress, educating people. And she kind of took our model to heart again. She she just started started subjectively taking her energetic temperature every morning. And she's like, it's already changed me like. I am no longer staying up till 2 a.m. and thinking that I got to get up at 5 a.m. in order Mm. to have energy, right? She thought that she had to, yeah, kind of effort more to gain more energy. And a lot of times the key for most people, especially those that experience burnout, is rest and how to rest efficiently and effectively. And I would say it's more than rest, it's recovery. And we can go into talking about the difference between rest and recovery because there is a difference. I'm just so amazed that we as maybe conscious or mostly unconscious beings just are so bad at assessing it. You Mm -hmm. said there is this one side, of course, where people just don't know about this and I completely get it. And I have been burned out before and it was all about bigger, faster, push, push, push. It's just like, I'm just amazed of how much more our body knows than our conscious mind. We are just sometimes quite bad (laughs) at knowing what we really need, right? Well, it is actually a skill called interoception that everybody is learning. Yeah. So interoception is the ability to feel your body, right? And give it language. Mm. So like that tightness in my throat, that butterflies in my belly, Mm. like some people are brand new to actually feeling the sensations coming through. And it's a skill that you can develop. Some people are born with it. Other people have to develop it. And wherever you're beginning is great. The goal though, is to kind of increase the amount of colors you're coloring with so you can make beautiful art in your life. So instead of just being very, and I say gross when I mean like big, like being very um, more elementary about it, Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I guess my energy is a little low. Eventually you'll be like, 
my energy is low. I feel it like deep in my heart. And I think it's because of X. Like you can start to like follow it all the way down to the root because all the information is right here. And your ability yes. to interpret and discern grows exponentially. Mm. And again, anybody can look this up. It's called interoception. Okay. That's a skill yeah. that we need to develop. Um, but what everybody also should know is that the body is an extension of, or the body is the unconscious mind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you ever want to know, and we're being basically... of our choices are coming from our unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to see where the lion's share of your choices are coming from, embodiment is essential, meaning interoception, the ability to feel, place, follow. That's really, really important when we're talking about the art of transformation. I love it. I could talk about this stuff forever. I know. Yeah, (laughs) I totally agree. I just love it. And I feel as well. So I've been using the Source app probably for, well, actually since the beginning of the year, right? Like February. So I feel as well that I've gotten better. I've learned about myself and I've learned about some of the signs that my body gives me Mm. just by taking that daily measurement and listening to it as well instead of thinking Mm. oh I have a long list to do so I need to keep pushing again and ignoring it I think Mm. that is probably what brings you to burnout and for sure that's what got me into burnout in the first place ignoring the body's signs Um, it's just yeah amazing so thank you very much for sharing that fantastic name i never heard Mm, about that one (laughs) i know i know it's it's new to my world as well and that's just kind of what's so fun um for me is this constant emergence of Mm. all this incredibly powerful helpful information as we try to build a bridge into a more vital future You know, we have to stay humble with what we know because there's so much information coming through. So you have to be willing to kind of update your map often. (laughs) And that's what I love as well about your, um, it's not just the app and not just the coaching, right? But you're having as well really good lessons as well that people can join and i have joined them nearly all of them so far i just love it because we're yeah because it's all about the signs um people listening to my podcast know it's all (laughs) what i love about the signs but just as well understanding more of our body and so many people have studied that already but it's just not something that has gone so mainstream Mm -hmm. until recently until now right where we Mm -hmm. actually look at i mean you do that all the time at scientific papers and actually get Mm -hmm. the facts Mm -hmm. to show what we might have called in the past spiritual or spirituality Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now it's like science and spirituality just become one which is a Mm. fantastic time to be in i just love it so much me too there is um an author named uh, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget his name. The title of the book is Thank God for Evolution. And what I loved about yeah. this book is because a pastor and a Darwinist, they got married and they wrote a book about ah. creation. <laughs> and what was awesome was they were able to identify that they were talking about the same thing, the same awe, the same wonder. But one yes. was written in this like, poetic and he called it nighttime language and that was actually spirituality right and the other was talking about it from a daytime language which was science but the awe that they were experiencing was the same and so that's where it's like when you talk about the intersect of science and spirituality we we just want to honor both because they're pointing at many times the same thing just interpreted in these different languages and how it feels so much more full when it doesn't have to be an either or you know and it's like oh yeah (laughs) these things actually are two sides of the same coin yeah oh I love it I just 
could again talk about it forever. Um, my Hello. next question is about energy in specific. I mean, this is a Raise Your Energy yeah. podcast. Let me ask you, why is energy important for you? For obvious reasons, of course, you created the Source app and the whole company around it. But how do you understand energy in your personal life and how how is energy important for you in your life so just based on my personal journey i had like a really good run early in my life to like achieve everything that i wanted and i kept thinking that these achievements would give me a sense of wholeness or fullness mm. and when I achieved those things it was just I was so quickly on to the next yes. when burnout happened and I call burnout a sacred cauldron because it is when burnout happened I lost my life force mm. and it became so clear to me that my life was so blessed I kept thinking that like more achievements would make it more blessed, <laughs> but all the blessings were right there for me to receive. And I was literally depleting myself, trying to find something that I already had. Yes. And mm -hmm. then it became just a pursuit of health, of vitality. And without, I took that for granted early in my life. I did because you're young and you have youth on your side. But I literally, when you're in burnout, you, you feel the life leaving you. The life mm -hmm. has left you. And yes. you realize all I want is that, like none of the money or the whatever, like I, that is priceless. That vitality, that life force in yoga, we call it prana. That yes. is the gold. And so that's yes. why energy is important to me because for so long I was using energy, all my life force to achieve something that wasn't going to give me what I thought it would give. And then it just became almost like a pursuit of learning how to cycle energy so I could just be in this life, appreciate my blessings and reduce my suffering. And life just became more about that. And that's why, yeah. I hope that makes sense, but that's why energy is important yeah. to me. It, it, it is the prime currency. It is. And I, I'm so with you on that. I think my journey, just not on the more physical and sports side, but more the corporate career side right. has been exactly the same. It was all about achieving the next step and the next and the next searching for something to fix that hole inside of me that I didn't even know that was there. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think in the last month and even year of before I accepted my burnout, I wouldn't call that life anymore. I, I, mm -hmm. I said recently, I just thought, when do I wake up from this really bad TV show? Because right. that's not, that's not life anymore. Right. And yeah. now, that I have had as well these realization that it's really about feeling well, feeling energized, but doing as well something with that energy, right? It's all about, that is literally the currency now, it's energy. Right. It's like, how do I balance that energy and being mindful of it and do more of what gives me energy and do less of what depletes me of energy in kind of a bad way and and who are the people around you right that um, you want to have that give you energy so all of these things just all now about energy instead of achievement so yes right. I completely understand <laughs> yeah yeah I'm sure many people too many that's why we're solving it at source solving the human energy crisis <laughs> because too many of us, it's reached that epidemic point where we bought in, we bought into a paradigm. Oopsies, yeah. that paradigm doesn't work. And, yeah. and maybe it worked for a time. Maybe we needed that time of, you know, yeah. more of that industrialized psychology, yeah. you know, but we're moving into a new age, you know, and we're kind of at the precipice of it. Yes. 
which is just amazing. Yeah. And thankfully, we are right there. Yeah. <laughs> Together, because it is a lonely experience, you know. And so, yes, the fact that we can be there together, we can have a shared conversation. Yeah. Um, it isn't, you know, for anybody that is experiencing burnout, the beautiful news is that it's reversible. Yes. It is going to require <laughs> you mm -hmm. to release some habits and patterns that aren't serving. And yeah. to the degree that you can do that, you will be able to heal. And I know that, of course, since very recently, we can actually invite as well everybody to come and join the Source app oh, yeah. <laughs> and be part of the team, which is fantastic. I mean, I'm so happy now to offer it as well to everybody who's listening today. But in the years before, when you started, you work more with companies, right? So I would love to understand a little bit more about what kind of results you've been able to see when working with organizations and what, because this is really where most of that burnout topic is coming up now, right? It's, it's people in corporations and employment statuses that are being surveyed and saying that over 70, sometimes even 80% of them feel burnt out or have felt burnt out before. So can you tell us a little bit about bringing source to that world and what have been results that you've already been seeing? Absolutely. So I think the vision that I caught fire for was this idea that we can actually track the nervous system of culture in a way that keeps everybody's privacy private. Mm -hmm. And why this kind of grabbed my attention was if you can monitor the ebbs and flows of not just the organization, imagine you know the organization like a, an organism, which it is in many ways, mm -hmm. it's like this living and breathing entity. And inside this entity, there's all these different teams and departments. Now, some of these teams and departments, they're experiencing loads much greater than other teams and departments. And yet, many organizations are deploying kind of a, a solution. Sometimes it's just a Band-Aid, you know, across the board and having everybody kind of figure it out, you know, for themselves. Yeah. And this is organizations literally doing the best that they can. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What Source is bringing to the table, though, is this ability to monitor with precision. So instead of a blanket rollout, we can actually see, mm -hmm. okay, the manager's team, actually their baseline just dropped. And we've seen this in data. And so the baseline dropping, you know. Mm -hmm. A little acute load, not not bad news. That actually can unlock potential. But when that goes unchecked for too long, now we actually mm. in data objectively know that this team is susceptible for burnout. So this data allows us to get upstream on all of this mismanaged workplace stress in a way that's way more surgical than, let's say, deploying you know, a meditation app. Mm. So by looking at the data, we've been able to see various things in organizations. We can see when travel affects a team, like we saw this whole team travel from the States over to Israel, and it was really, really impactful on their nervous systems. It was a big, big wow. load. Time changes, you know, um, anticipation, having to go in and do a big presentation when you're under-resourced. We saw in data this team wow. just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> and intuitively, we know, oh, yeah, that happens. We have seen through COVID how COVID kind of um, spread through a team. And we could see it in data. It would be like, boom, boom, boom. And it was also grief. We could see grief because people were losing people through COVID, mm -hmm. which was, it's all imprinting on the nervous system. We could see how vacation mm -hmm. actually helps baseline rise. So we could watch one team that was, uh, uh, there was a team in the UK, a leadership team, and then there was an operation team in India, and they actually had different calendar years. Mm -hmm. And so the team in the UK during vacation, you know, UK people, they take holiday a lot better than we do in the States. And we could actually see how their baseline increased, their levels of recovery, restoration, rejuvenation increased. The team in India simultaneously 
you know, COVID was hitting, the load was still great, and they were dropping. So all yeah. of this to say, being able to know in real time what teams are prime for peak and what teams are susceptible to burnout, this allows the organization to be a lot more responsive. So yes. in addition, you know, we work with the management on how, you know, how mm. to integrate these learnings into things like quarterly planning. It's like, because a lot of things are cyclical for organizations and every year the bottom yes. is going to drop out. What can we do to get in front of that? Like, where is it dropping yeah. out? And what can we do to prepare and fortify the system so that the bottom doesn't drop out? You know, yes. and these are the explorations <laughs> that we are having in real time, which is fascinating. But overall, what we know is that when people honor their energetic um, bandwidth in the ways in which source gives, we see baseline rising. There's always going to be ebb and flow because life ebbs and flows. Again, yes. don't have this expectation yeah. that you're always going to go up to the right, right? There's going to be ebb and flow, but you will ebb and flow at a higher level. Yeah. And that's what source can see in data and um, some of the cool the cool things that we get to experience um, being a very novel company. <laughs> yes, I, I just love it so much. I always worked for pretty good companies that really tried their best. Like you said, they, a lot of them are trying their best to help their yeah. employees, their managers, their leaders to, to help each other to be healthier to be more balanced to be able to recover but i have seen in my previous jobs that the novelty of these things quite often go quickly away and then it's just not helpful anymore because yeah. it's just another add-on that gets to be put on the list um, and if there is just no feedback, right? There needs to be that feedback system. Absolutely. There needs to somehow, I mean, we're living in a society where science is our language and we want to yeah. see data, right? We want to see the truth. And that's what I just love about tools because it can actually give you, yeah, data on the day, literally, which yeah. we, we never had where I worked. Uh, it was just never really possible to measure that. Yeah. And, you know, what we are doing is a, a moonshot. I'm going to be really honest. <laughs> like yeah. we are trying to solve the human energy crisis. This is a giant moonshot that we are taking. And we really believe that if we can give organizations the service that they need, that we have a better chance of achieving this moonshot. So that's why we're focused also on organizations. Yes. But what organizations are up against, I have so much compassion for. They're having an identity crisis. Who are yes. they to their people? Yes. Are they now supposed, I mean, before they used to be an employer and now they need to be like, you know, a mother and an auntie and they need to take care of their people. So they're being tasked because they're asking more. So it, yeah. it needs to be reciprocal. If you're going to ask more of your people, you have to be willing to give more to your people. And so dismantling I mean, I know how hard it is to dismantle old patterns inside of myself. Looking at an organization, I mean, these are conditions oh, and wow. patterns that are thick. So we have to be patient with this process. Yeah. It is so not an overnight fix because we're literally shifting a paradigm. So we're shifting from this mechanistic, robotic, one-speed yeah. way of living and working into a living system paradigm. And this could take the rest of my life, you know, at source to see, you know, see us make some serious gains. What I take a stand for now, though, is that it's possible. This is not about do we know what to do? I feel like the how is here. The how is here. What we really need to work towards is the willingness. Yes. And that requires people to step into the unknown and a lot yes. of like scary stuff. And when you're doing yeah. it at an organizational level and you have all these fiduciary responsibilities, again, I have compassion, but it is the way. Let's yes. not mix words. Like the how is here. Yeah. <laughs> we know we're getting 
really good in knowing, but then making that step. It's on individual level and organizational level, right? When is the pain big enough for you to be willing to change? Yep. Uh, that comes down to every single person. When is the pain big enough or when have they experienced something so big or maybe even sometimes traumatic that they say, okay, no more, this is a finishing right. line. And on yeah. an organizational level, I feel there are just, an organization is made out of individuals. There are just mm -hmm. so many individuals that play a decision-making in that process. So like yeah. you said, we, we have to just have a bit more patience with them, but we know there are already companies out there who, who know that this is the future, that this is the past that we have to go in now. Yeah. And don't they, wouldn't you rather be known as being on the bleeding edge than you yeah. know, somebody that is late to the party? So come yes. on organizations, like be a <laughs> yes. part of the change. Like be cool, don't be like outdated, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's not even that difficult, is it? <laughs> it is so simple. I had a teacher yeah. that said, you pay now or you pay later. You pay now or you <laughs> yeah. pay later. Yeah. And so you got to get right. You got to get aligned. You got to get an integrity. And this is happening on so many levels, so many dimensions right now. And like you said, the pain is intelligent. And if you're saying, I don't want to pay now, okay. <laughs> You're gonna the pain is going to increase and the a APR is higher so you can get with it or yeah. you know what you're signing up for but if yeah. you want to get with it like we can start yes we can start <laughs> <laughs> let's start okay thank you so much I'm just so honored to be part of the team I know it was a a fantastic synchronicity that I Indeed. got into your world and into the world of source. Um, and like I said, it's just mind blowing of how it helped me and change and listen more to my heart. Um, and yes, so we want everybody to join the source family, don't we? So 100%, we will give, 100%. we will give them, you will have information in the show notes, um, to how to sign up and find out more about source and how it actually works. Right, Jess? Yes, indeed, Linda. And thank you so much for hearing the call, picking up the phone, jumping yes. right in and, and being up and being a part of this, like data-driven human-centered movement you know i think there is nothing more thrilling personally than building this greater community of people that really are shepherding a new way <laughs> yes. just, uh, yay <laughs> yay us come join the party don't miss yeah. out um and and feel better there is a path to feel better and that's yeah. what we do at source Perfect. Thank you so much. It Thank was a pleasure you, having you here on the podcast. And I'm sure we're going to speak again. And you guys listening to the episode will find out much more about Source and how I'm going to use it, how I'm going to use it as well with all of my clients and program participants and how it can help you. You will find out so much more in future episodes. But thank you so much, Jess. It was an Thank honor you. to have you here. Thank you. My honor as well.